Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Outer space. space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. What price a word? Written by Radius 55. Get up the stairs! Ambassador Rutilia paused, staring behind at the mass. Almost 20,000 beings of a dozen races could be seen. Some were rebels, armed with a motley assortment of weaponry that was nonetheless perfectly capable of ending her life. Mixed in were professional agitators, experts at inflaming the passions of the disaffected and molding it to whatever way that their paymasters desired. But the majority were common folks, lashing out at their governments for getting into a war that they could not win. A perfectly understandable, if disappointing, reaction. Unfortunately, as a representative of the winning side, Rutilia was a legitimate and much more accessible target for their wrath. Come on, ma'am, the human John Mattingly shouted again, grabbing her by the slender, fur-covered arm and dragging her bodily up the flight. The human was a leader of a dozen security contractors the Othwain's collective had hired to beef up security of a guard. As distasteful as Ambassador found using mercenaries, they had come highly recommended and it was cheaper to outsource the brawn than to keep them on staff. Her personal team consisted of eight fellow Othwain bodyguards, and, at least up until this morning, she considered them more than enough. Well, she had eight bodyguards. Seeing the seething tide of destruction heading their way, the commander had deserted and the rest had followed suit. Their abandonment had left one ambassador, Ruotelia, alone but for her twelve hired human guards. It had surprised her to no end that these mercenaries didn't join the exodus. Rather, they had found this building, a solid reinforced ceramic construct, to hold up in and were now busy fortifying it. It was almost like they expected to be able to hold on long enough for reinforcements to arrive. In here, Ambassador, the human said, leading her into a section of empty offices midway up the structure. At one time, they would have bustled with life, but the war had drained the local economy of labor and capital. Now, there was an empty shell with bare, stone-cold walls. Now, I need you to... She cut the man off, Mr. Mattingly. Agent, ma'am, he corrected. I'm sorry, Agent Mattingly. Rutilia corrected with only a trace of the inner turmoil she felt reaching her voice. She hadn't even bothered to say more than ten words to these beings in the hours before this mess. Now, she wished that she'd gotten the chance to know these brave souls. I thank you for your aid, but it's pointless. If you would leave a rifle and some ammunition, you may feel free to make your escape. It's me, the mob wants. Mattingly took his time in responding. Thank you, Ambassador Rutilia, he began, actually managing to pronounce the odd syllables as if he were a native. But I think we'll just as soon stay right here. Rutilia was aghast. But there are more than a thousand of them for each of you. Do you honestly expect to survive those odds? Humans have made it through worse, he replied, shrugging. And even if we don't, there are much worse ways to die. But my team and I are committed. There's no backing out now. She continued to stare at him, gaping, as the human met her gaze nervously. It was inconceivable that these mercenaries would be more willing to lay down their lives in her defense than the members of her own nation. Or that a species so obviously insane could ever have achieved spaceflight. Now, ma'am, if we're gonna defend this place, we need to get you secure and our defenses in place. The ambassador, once again, allowed herself to be led away. As she was moved further back into the building, she passed other humans moving purposefully. She saw them setting out mines and charges. Some were erecting hasty barricades and fighting positions, while others strung down a wire across hallways. One burly-skinned man seemed to be setting up what had to be a crew-served plasma caster, where did you get all of this? She asked hesitantly. We, uh, convinced a few of your guards to part with some hardware before they, um, made their exit. Agent Mattingly said as tactfully as he could, but uh, most of it we carried ourselves. You carried that? She asked, pointing incredulously at the crew-served weapon that they had just passed. There was no way her personal guards would have been able to carry a 57-kilo monster like that around without her noticing. <laughs> yeah, Schlock has a thing for big guns. Um, he grabbed it out of the truck as we bailed, and I'm really glad he did. 
But you were hired as a light protection detail. The slender Colleen flicked her ears in exasperation. Yes, ma'am, and right now I wish we had come with a heavy loadout. If we had our armor, I probably wouldn't even have bothered holding up here. We could have cut a path to safety. No sweat. Then he led her through the door into one of the central rooms of the building. Inside were several electronic devices along with a massive fiber optic cabling and a few piles of supplies. How had they managed to set this up in a few short minutes that they had been in the building escaped her? Elka, keep an eye on the ambassador while I look over these readings. Pleased to meet you, ambassador, the human female said. She had what Rutilia sounded like a strangely stilted accent, clipped with an emphasis on odd syllables. You can sit here, ma'am. The tall, golden-haired woman motioned to a pile of packs as she rummaged for something. And please, put this on. It's not as good as tailored armor, but it will still stop most impacts. Thank you, um, Elka, was it? The ambassador asked, shrugging into the heavy plate carrier. It was designed for humans, but the two species were close enough in build that it wasn't a bad fit. Yes, Ambassador Rutilia, it's a team name. Well, since we'll be dying together, please call me Yawal, the alien female said dryly. Alka cocked her head and responded, Would not count us amongst the dead just yet. She was about to respond when a buzz brought her attention to one of the multitude of screens. Through it, she saw that the mob had brought by pry bars and cutting torches and attacking the building doors with abandon. Build to withstand vandalism and petty burglary. They were strong, but couldn't stand up to concentrated attack. Elka, I think it's about time we welcome our guests, John said, pointing. The woman seemed to inflate slightly as she asked, How's the crowd? I would not want to start the poll early. They're packed shoulder to tentacle down there, was the reply. At least a dozen have been trampled by the rest. Good. But make sure you get the video. <laughs> yeah, I got of three angles, Mattingly responded in an amused tone. Then his voice chilled as he gave the command. Do it. Halka's finger stabbed down on the control, and there was a muted thump. Rutilia watched through the screen as the door was blown off its hinges by several precisely placed charges. For a moment... She was surprised that her bodyguards would have wasted even a relatively few minutes of protection the door would have afforded them in exchange for injuring a handful of attackers. Then the thermobaric charge strapped to the back detonated in the middle of the crowd. Several hundred attackers were instantly popped by the deflagration burn, organs turned to mush by the sudden wall of air that thundered through them. Almost a thousand more were injured to varying degrees, ranging from massive bruising to ruptured oral cavities to damaged respiratory systems. For a moment, it looked like the mob had been broken by the carnage. And then they seemed to explode, racing for the suddenly unbarred doorway. The horde crashed into the lobby and into the building, searching for their prize. But they were hunting a very dangerous game, as a steadily accumulated body count aptly indicated. Mines ranging from pro poppers to emplaced charges to modern equivalent of old-fashioned M18 Claymore Old Firth fame cut huge swaths through the advancing parties. Unsuspecting frontrunners were cut in half as by an invisible razor, as the pressure of those behind them forced them into the monomolecular carbon nanofilament. Others were crushed as pre-stressed supports gave way under the weight of hundreds of bodies. But the flood would not be stopped by mere traps. They were hungry for blood, and they had their victim cornered. This depleted but still substantial force burst through the stairwell and straight into the messed human fire. Hypervelocity rifles barked and flechette guns coughed as dozens of bodies hit the floor. Then the crew served plasma caster opened up and the remainder of the attackers flash fried. A few still in the stairway caught the edge of the blast and fell, writhing as they received instant third-degree burns. Once again, the crowd surged, some charging into the kill zone as the horrible weapon charged for another shot. A few of the smarter searched for an alternate route or a thin wall that they could break down. Eventually, they would find a way in. If you excuse me, Madam Ambassador, I need to get to the defenses. Agent Mattingly said as he turned to leave for the relative safety of the interior office. Mate, Britannia interrupted, before you go, answer one question. At a nod, she asked simply, Why? Excuse me, Mattingly asked, confused. Why are you here? Why do you stay rather than escape when you had a chance? I mean, for universe's sake, we're not even the same species. 
Agent John Mattingly looked at her for a long moment before saying simply, We gave you our word. Without that, what are we? And then he turned and sprinted to where the rest of his men and women were preparing to fight and die, simply to preserve their honor. Captain Hurrah of the Athwa Ains Marine Corps shook his head as he walked over the carpet of bodies that littered the square. He'd seen some terrible things in the people's service, but he didn't think that even the massacre of Dalto Prime was quite on this level. No, he thought, as he passed a body whose lungs had been torn out through the mouth by the implosion effect of a thermobaric bomb. This is definitely worse than that. He had wanted to lead his company off the light cruiser, the Protector Fruma, hours ago. Politics prevented that. The station commander, an incompetent if he had ever seen one, had spent the time trying to convince the locals to do the job. Good PR, he said. Show our trust, he said. It made Hurrah want to vomit. The locals wouldn't have bothered to piss on an Athwanian if they had been on fire, and the delay had probably cost the ambassador her life. What a waste, he muttered to himself as he climbed through the shattered remains of the doorway. But at least they died well. And so they had. By the captain's practice time, there were over 6,000 dead between the square and the first floor alone. He grew more impressed as he continued through the building. It was obvious. Whoever had planned this dispense knew their stuff, and Hurrah was going to make sure that he got a medal for it. Even it was posthumous. Sir, a voice called out over the comms, I think you're the one to see this. Twelfth floor through the stairwell three. Captain acknowledged the call and began to make his way to the indicated position. As he did, the bodies seemed to get thicker. Some appeared to have been left where they fell, but a vast majority looked to have been moved to an out-of-the-way spot, as if to make room for more to take their place. Walking onto the twelfth floor lander, he was suddenly faced with a mountain. It reached the ceiling and covered a patch of flooring eight meters across and at least five deep. He couldn't tell if it went any further than that because it was obviously centered on a doorway. At the mountain, it was made of corpses. I think we found the last stand, he told the gathered marines around him. Time to start digging. He proceeded to grab a body and hurl it to the side. A few of the soldiers looked more than a little reluctant, but they joined their officer in the job. Soon, the doorway was clear enough to squeeze a suit through. So Captain Hurrah laid down and Betty crawled over the top of the pile. On the other side, he froze. The pile did indeed extend for several meters into the room, but that wasn't what grabbed his attention. It was the six humans sprawled against the far wall. They were covered in bandages, quick heel, and a couple of splints. Blood soaked their clothing, and it was obviously at least partly their own. They were slumped there like so many dead but they weren't. Captain Hurrah saw one lift his head and nod slowly to the Othwain's officer. Then, as the Marine regained his senses and began to move forward once again, he pulled a small package from his pocket. Ambassador Rutilia, he asked, hesitantly, almost afraid of the answer. The human jerked a thumb to the doorway. Back there, he said in a voice that spoke of unimaginable exhaustion. I've got a medic looking at her. Not much else he can do here he said, indicating their dressed wounds and the five blank-covered forms laid neatly in the corner. She's fine, he continued, cutting off the captain's next question. Just the shock of the ordeal. Hurrah nodded and ordered a pair of his troops to secure the ambassador as he removed his helmet to get a good look at the man in front of him. The human had reduced a cigarette from the package and lit it with a small device. He wrinkled his nose in disgust at the thing. Tobacco was outlawed in most planets as a carcinogen and a filthy habit. But the human took a long drag. Anyway. That stuff will kill you, you know, Hurrah said. He was stupid, but he had to say something. And the noxious smoke was messing with his mind. The human looked down at the cancer stick, and then at his comrades, living and dead, before moving to the much larger pile of would-be murderers against the far wall. Finally, his gaze returned to the alien in front of him, and it seemed to Hurrah as if the man was staring right through him. Yeah, John Mattingly said, sighing. But uh, at this point, uh, they'll have to get in line. End of story.
The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click and click with energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I just want to quickly thank the T5 channel members and patrons. Alithia, Barky, Beauty Cure, Meridian117, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholch, Albard and Gusta, Savage Patch Papa, 